the, probably the two things that get me the most jazz right now are all of the buzz around social networking with um, with tools, uh, primarily as they relate to the business and how the business can take advantage of the social technologies, whether it's inside their firewall or out. Um, the other area that I like to focus on is search. It's something I'm really passionate about, something I really enjoy working with clients through different problems that they have. Just finding the stuff that they already own. It's not really so much inventing new stuff, it's that they have this huge investment in the work that they've already done and they just want to be able to find that stuff. I mean, both of those are kind of... Uh, kind of dry business-like sometimes, but um, I like the way that, that both of those technologies really connect people. And so whether you're talking about a mobile platform, whether you're talking about uh, laptops, touch screens, whatever it happens to be, all of those technologies have to have some sort of social driver and some reason for the end user to really want to engage the technology. And, um, and those are two applications that, that really shine when it comes to it's not new because it's been around for a while. I mean, some of the some of the technologies like Twitter and things like that, if you can really call Twitter a technology, um, haven't necessarily been around that long, but they're still kind of finding their footing. Um, and organizations are really grappling to figure out what their social media strategy is. And uh, I'm not a social media expert, but I play one. <laughs> and. Uh, as an end user, I like to use the technologies, but really it's about connecting with people inside my firewall and connecting my contacts to other people. Yeah. And that's what, that's what jazzes me. Okay, great. Man, there's so much. It's, um, the connection to the other MVPs is huge. Um, you know, I sort of basked in their shadow for a long time before I was an MVP and spent a lot of time learning from them and now to be considered part of that group is, is a pretty huge deal for me. Um, I try to stay humble. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's an annual award, so right. it, you get awarded, you got to keep working to keep it. And um, for me, that's, the, that's sort of the blessing and the curse, is I always feel like I'm not doing enough and, and try to keep going. And then, I, you know, um, I guess the jazz is the recognition that you get as an MVP. Um, the fact that people really do look up to you as, a, as an expert, which is not necessarily the case, because an MVP is really a community person. It's somebody who evangelizes the technology for better or for worse, um, or an honest voice. And uh, I think the, uh, the part that I like about it the most is just the honesty. It's that we're allowed to point out the warts and teach people about the workarounds. Public speaking. Um, I like to get up on stage and I like to talk about the technology. Um, I was an actor as a kid, and, and so public speaking comes really naturally to me. People say I'm a hand. I'm sitting here in front of this video <laughs> camera. That's right. So it's, uh, it's, it's not an uncomfortable thing for me to get up on stage and just wing it and talk about the technology. Uh, at settings like Tech Ed, it's a lot more formal. Um, you know, with the submission process, we have to get approved and, and go through all of those, just like every other speaker here. Um, the fact that we're an MVP doesn't change how we get access to the, to the shows. We still have to be good. We still have to keep our ratings up. And so there's a little bit of competition behind the scenes mm -hmm. where we all try to, try to one-up each other and hold our demos secret until we launch them at, at Tech Ed or at SharePoint Conference, whatever it happens to be for our track. No, I, just, I really appreciate the support we get from Microsoft for the MVP program. And, hoping it stays viable and, and as vibrant as it has been.